I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but if you have one of these generation BMW S1000RRs, this is the 2015-2016 model, um, and at the back of the bike on the rear shock absorber where it attaches to the frame at the top, there's actually an adjustable spacer there. So there's a little bolt that goes through the top of the shock, uh, like all shock absorbers, but in this case, the spacer, when you pull the bolt out, can actually be removed and rotated. And when you rotate it, um, if the hole is more towards the top, then it will lower the back. And if the hole is closer to the bottom, then it will obviously lift the back. So, you know, I wanted to know, well, how much difference would it actually make to the rear end uh, by moving that and rotating it in terms of the height of the bike? And I don't mean at the shock absorber, I mean at the rear of the bike. So uh, without any data, then, uh, you know, I obviously can't answer the question. So this video is about the collection of that data and uh, understanding how much movement you get at the rear when you rotate that little concentric spacer that is on these BMWs. Before I give the data that we got by pulling your spaces out and rotating them, I just first of all want to explain why we went in this path by giving you a rundown of the configuration of this motorcycle. We did a couple of things to it. First of all, we fitted a different tyre. We put a 200 by 60 profile rear tyre. It comes standard with a 55 profile. By going to a 60 profile, it lifted the centre of the axle approximately 8 millimetres. So now imagine this, you've got an 8 mil lift, uh, the weight bias is now more towards the front. It actually rode pretty good on that, uh, in that configuration, and uh, we made a video about that specifically. We then installed a high-end by Tubo race suspension, and in discussion with Joe Salter down there at Ride Dynamics, we did a couple of things to the setting of this, and then we ended up uh, checking it on the track, and it was pretty good. The end result, or the geometry we ended up with, was a three mil drop on the front end, which meant now six mil was exposed in the front forks above the top triple clamp. Normally, or, or in standard configuration, it's three mil. So we've dropped the front effectively by three mil. We then shortened the rear shock by two rotations, which is two millimeters, and that lowered the back end by five mil. So in that configuration, you've now effectively got a three mil drop in the front and a three mil lift in the back. So in order to test or get data around these little spaces, we basically extended the shock back again by two mil, which raised the back, the, the original five mil. We then had to remove those concentric little spaces. And the way you do that is you, obviously you loosen it, but you're gonna have to support the, the frame of the bike. And I just did it through the foot pegs and then just left um, a little paddock stand lifter at the back so I could wiggle the back wheel. You, in order to get that bolt out, what you do have to do is you've got to remove the little sensor which is located on the left hand side of the shock absorber. And that sensor detects movement at the rear end and I believe it affects uh, dynamic damping control in the, the standard configuration of these bikes and also the ABS, the way it behaves. And there is a calibration in the settings here where you recalibrate the bike if you do change the height of the rear of, of, of the back end so that that sensor knows when the bike is in or whatever position the bike's in. Now, once you drop that, then it's just simply a matter of undoing that bolt completely and then pulling it out with a pair of pointy nose pliers or something. Then you've got to remove both of the little spacers. The easiest way for me to get the spacer out on the right hand side, the left hand side's real easy, you just pull it out with a pair of pliers. But on the right hand side, it's quite tight and it's behind a few cables. So I just use a piece of threaded rod. I screw it into it, I screwed it into it, and then I just wiggled it until it came out. And I did, I used that rod to actually replace that spacer back into its new position, which was rotated. Now, in the rotated position we had, now the hole is closer to the top, which is effectively um, the same as shortening the shock because it's going to lower the back, the back end of the motorcycle. Once you've uh, put the spacers back in, it's just a matter of lining up the holes, wiggling that bolt and getting it in there and then tightening it to a torque of 56 Newton meters. Once you get that back in, then you just reattach the sensor and then uh, you can take the weight on the rear wheel with a paddock stand. Uh, you do that, you remove the, um, you know, obviously remove any stands you've got under the chassis or the frame of the bike. Now, I re-measured this and it's really interesting because I had a bit of a look at these concentric spaces and I figured that the shift from uh, the low position to the high position was probably around two to two and a half millimetres. 
So I figured it was going to be close to 2 mil, therefore it's probably going to be a 5 mil change in height at the rear of the bike. And sure enough, when we measured it, it's actually 5 millimetres difference. So it's my belief that it's probably the equivalent of a 2 mil shift in or change in the length of the shock absorber and uh, it basically put us back to exactly where we were. But uh, anyway, I hope that information is useful to you. Uh, like I said, I didn't have the data, I was unable to find that data specifically from anywhere, so uh, I thought I'd put it out there and uh, who knows, you might find some use with it.